Let's talk about a landing page. What is a landing page? A landing page is a one page website generally dedicated to one specific topic, a key message, or a call to action. What's a web form? It's a form used to gather contact information such as an email address or a phone number and the main focus of a web form is to provide a call to action that allows a contact to provide or request information. So I'm going to show you an actual landing page with a web form on it here. This is one that we built through the Data and Marketing Supercenter. It says, I can make your insurance search easy and relaxing. Let's have a conversation. And if you notice, first name, last name, email, phone number, start a conversation. Not ready to talk to an insurance agent? Listen to a two-minute recorded message on, a, on three insurance coverage weaknesses that we see on a daily basis. And then we provide a number there. Now, when you're creating your web form, there are different tools that you can use to create a landing page and web form. So for our training today, we're really going to keep landing page and web form kind of as one thing. A web form can be different from a landing page because it can just be a form by itself. But at the end of the day, if you're filling it out, it's still going to go to some kind of URL and it's still going to go to its own individual site. Of course, some of the tools that you can use are the Data Supercenter, which we're going to show you an example of today, how to create a very good landing page. Google Forms, Google Docs out there, they have, a, they have forms that you can use. Wufu, we, I've, I used Wufu for years before I actually had the Data Supercenter made so Wufu is something that we really believe in and I'll show you guys this in a second email tools a lot of you are already using tools that provide landing pages and web forms but you might not use that functionality such as eye contact MailChimp blitz lead manager easy links those those already provide the links the URLs that you can use and drive people to them it's just a matter of you actually creating that landing page some of the other landing pages that a lot of people don't think about but you really should have are like your live chat on your website, your help forms such as Snap Engage, which is who we use on InspireNation.org, live chat, click desk. These are very low cost ways of allowing people to communicate with you and allowing people to request information or request help if that's what they need. It's on our homepage on the left side over here, you see a help tab. So if you click on this help tab, it will open up and fills in my information, and then you can post your question in there. Again, we use Snap Engage. It's very low cost. It doesn't really matter who you use, but this is a web form, and a lot of folks don't think about that. This is someone requesting help. They're requesting information on your form. And the whole point of this, guys, is to, to identify the people that want to talk to us about our product or our service. So if you have a website out there, I strongly suggest that you get one of these live chat features or you or you use like Snap Engage or one of those. One of the things I do want to stress is that you don't have to keep this where you're actually live chatting. If you notice on ours, any of you that have used ours, unless my assistant or one of my team members is available, we just keep it on the email part of it there. You can use this for service. You can use this for sale. Again, doesn't matter how you use it, but I strongly recommend that you have it available on your website. The only thing that's different between the companies that are selling you the internet leads and what I'm showing you today is the fact that they've got a lot more of them out there. So they're spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars a month to go on as many sites and as many different forums and as many forums and as many blogs and, you know, as, as many different Google sites as possible so that they can get people to fill out the form. You're going to be more specialized with yours. You're going to be more specific. And these are exclusive. So anyone who fills out one of these landing pages or forms, these are exclusive to you because you're the one that enticed them to even want to fill it out to begin with. So they're very exclusive. Let's talk about the types of landing pages and web forms that work best, okay, that work best. First and foremost, you want to make sure that you've got a quote box or at least a link to a quote box on a dedicated landing page, your website, and or social networking site, like a LinkedIn. So I want to show you LinkedIn as an example, some, some things that a lot of people don't realize they can do with LinkedIn to help drive traffic. Now this is my LinkedIn profile over here. So I'm going to go under edit profile. Now you've got several places in here that you can actually put information that will drive traffic to you. 
through a landing page or through a web form. The first place that I'm going to show you is under contact info. Again, I'm on my profile under under the edit the profile. I'm going to go to contact info. It's a little box over here on the right side. And in here, LinkedIn gives you or three places you can put a hyperlink. Under here, I've got my IN business mentoring. I've got my uh, chat box. I've got my website. So right here, if you've got a landing page or you've got a quote box on your website, you can click right here. It will ask you what do you want to put. So if you notice, I've got my data supercenter link. I've got the link to my website and I've got the link to the 10 minute business mentoring. And a lot of people will go out and look at your contact info. I get a lot of clicks on this contact info. Another thing that you can do is when you're using your own summary, each of you should have your own profile, your own summary out there. Make sure that you've got something on your summary that drives people back to your website or back to your landing page or back to your web form. So if you notice here on mine, Billy and his team at Inspire Nation recently released three new products, the Data and Marketing Supercenter, and there's a link to it, the 10-Minute Business Mentor Video Newsletter, and there's a link to it, the PNC Marketing Plan Tool, which a lot of you guys have filled out already, there's a link to it. Now, this is free. They're already looking at your profile. They're already trying to figure out who you are, and if you've followed any of our trainings from before, like our social networking, you know that we strongly recommend that you connect with every customer, every prospect, everyone that you come in contact with. Now there's another way that they can go to your landing page or they can go to your web form. I already showed you the live chat or help form on your website, a download information link on website or social networking site, event registration link. Each of you that are on the webinar today, you registered for this webinar, which means you had to provide information. It's the same thing for you guys. I don't understand why it's okay for you to chase, chase one person and explain your expertise when you could actually explain that expertise to 20 people, to 30 people, to 40 people. And all that takes a lot of times is you putting together a nice little conference call. Now, inside of Facebook, which I'm going to show you here a little bit later, I'm going to show you how you can do a click to call campaign inside of Facebook. And what that will allow you to do is if you did have a, a registration that you wanted to use, either, either a verbal registration or there was a link that was out there, you could use a Facebook ad to drive people to that. But let's say you don't want to pay for anything. You just want it free as all get out. What are some things that you can do for free? to drive people to your landing page or to your web form. Well, one of the things that work really well for us is we use text messaging and inside the data supercenter, that's all built inside the data supercenter, the text messaging, but we'll tell people text or text message your email address to receive a free report or to register for our upcoming conference call or to see our latest deals if I've got some kind of coupon special going out there. So even though text messaging is not a officially a landing page or web form, you can still utilize it with a landing page or web form, and that works extremely well, okay, extremely well. A landing page hyperlink in a YouTube video description. Now, this is another thing that a lot of people don't use, so I'm going to go out to YouTube here, and I'm going to show you a couple of things. And on my YouTube channel, let's look at this one right here, the data and let's see, the data super center. Let's find one that's had a lot of you. Oh, here we go. How to buy a PNC insurance agency questions most people ask. So that's 6,270 views. So inside of my YouTube video here, it says how to buy a PNC agency. It's excuse me, how to buy a PNC agency slides are now available for download. Go to this link to download a copy of the slides from this presentation. So I'm going to click there. Click here. Now, if you notice, this says Wufu. Remember I said Wufu is one of those forms that we use from time to time. So I'm going to click on this form, how to buy and sell a PNC agency handout. They put their first name, their email address, phone number, and they click submit. It's that simple, guys. It, it really is that simple. So if you've got a YouTube video out there right now and you've got a web form or you want to drive people back to your website, make sure that your YouTube video actually has the link inside of the description. If you have a link or a form that you want them to fill out to request information about life insurance, make sure that that link is in there and make sure that link is in there early. Okay, I cannot stress that if you're using YouTube, you're gonna use this little tip that I'm giving you. Make sure that it's in the first or second sentence or they're not going to see. Facebook local awareness ad, I'm gonna save that one to show you. 
your emergency contact landing page. Now, if you're an insurance agent and you've dealt with us at all, you know that's a big deal for us, emergency contacts. Emergency contacts does three things for our agencies. One, it allows our customers to know that we are there for them during those during those difficult times, those emergency situations, and the way that we're there for them is that someone else has our information. So whether it's a cousin or a brother or a nephew, they have the agent's name, they have the agent's information, contact information, phone number, something like that. And that allows them to feel more comfortable, allows our customer to feel more comfortable because even if they're hurt, if they're in the hospital, they're out of town, someone else knows to contact us. So that's the first thing it does. Second thing it does for the agency is it allows us to spread our brand. So now if every single customer you wrote last year or you put your agency's information in the hands of an emergency contact, that's double the amount of people that know about you. You know, let's be honest. Most insurance staff members don't ask for referrals the way that you want them to. For whatever reason, even though you hired them for sales, they don't ask for referrals. But something like an emergency contact is really simple. It's simple to ask for. It's easy to use. It's easy to have a conversation about. And so we always ask for that. That's the second thing. So first thing was it allows our customers to feel good. Second thing was it allows the agency to spread its brand. Third thing is it allows that emergency contact to have another option when they decide to look for insurance or, you know, one of these companies convinces them they're going to save $340. It allows that emergency contact to have another option, especially since we ask them to put our phone number inside of their cell phone so that if something were to happen, they could easily get to us. So we use it for that. We use it for referral landing pages. We use it for quote reward. What's a quote reward? It's just a paper quote. If you allow us to quote your home, your auto, then we'll give you a $25 restaurant.com gift certificate. No, we put that on its own special page, its own special messaging. So I'm gonna go now and I'm gonna show you an emergency contact landing page. So you guys can see this emergency contact page. Now this is a Google Doc. And the reason why I want to show you the different forms was just to say, look, it's up to you what you wanna use. If you're using the Data Supercenter, it's all, all this stuff's already built inside the Data Supercenter for you. But if you're not using the Data Supercenter, and you're using a form like a WooFoo form. Okay, I showed you a WooFoo form, showed you how it works. That's how people can request different things from us. Now, this is a Google Docs or a Google form. So let me show you this. Let me scroll down. This is emergency contact form. What's the first name of the contact? What's the first name here? What the, I mean, all the different questions that you want to answer. And then when they hit submit, it flows back to a spreadsheet and you get a, a notice that someone filled out the form. Guys, let me tell you, our emergency contact process produces 8% of our business. Last month as a group, or not last month, excuse me, wish it was last month, last year as a group, meaning the 47 or 48 agencies that are part of our investment group, we wrote 23,000 plus policies, PNC policies. 8% of that came from the emergency contact process. So again, this is a form that you can put out on an email template that will generate leads for you, that will generate individualized, um, exclusive leads for you. It just takes you to actually create the form. So search engine optimization. You guys are already, hopefully, doing things to increase your SEO or your search engine optimization, like you're using keywords. If, if, if you're not sure, just hunt for yourself. Don't hunt for yourself on your own computer. Let me stress this. When you're trying to figure out if your SEO works, don't hunt for yourself on Google on your own computer. And the reason why is because you've already gone out to your website. There's already a cookie. So when you go out and you say, oh, I'm number one on Google, and I've embarrassed a lot of people that way, they'll go out and they'll search, and sure enough, there they go. They're, they've popped up all over the place. But then I'll go into my phone, and I'll search for them, and I've never searched for them before, and they're not even on the front page. So it's kind of one of those deals you got to be really careful. Once that cookie is dropped, once you've searched yourself, you're going to be there. So the first thing I'll tell you, don't look for yourself on your own computer when you're trying to get your SEO, trying to establish if you're going to get found or not. When you're talking about your search engine optimization, your keywords, the content, make sure that the content on your site is what people are looking for. 
people aren't going to fill out a form if you're talking about shoes and they're looking for hats. Okay, it doesn't work that way. So you got to make sure your content makes sense. Make sure your descriptions make sense. Questions and answers. This is something I think a lot of a lot of folks overlook. People go out and search. They, the reason why they're even on Google is because they're either trying to get information, verify information, or make sure that they're educating themselves. Okay, that's why they're out there. And of course, entertainment, but we're talking business. So that means if I'm looking for information and you've got a question and answer section on your page somewhere, that's something that Google is going to spotlight. Same thing on your landing pages and your web forms. When you're doing these, if you want to say, hey, I got a landing page out here where you want, you want information, you want answers on this, give me your first name, your email address, and I'll send you some answers on this. All those kind of things work. Questions and answers are what people are looking for. If you've got videos that provide questions and answers, people are looking for that. Just like I showed you guys on that how to buy a PNC agency, 6,000 plus views. That's because folks want to know how to buy a PNC agency. So we put together a video that showed how to, how to buy a PNC agency. Here's some other ways that you can drive a contact to your landing page or web form. An email blast to your contacts. Okay, an email blast to your contact, and it should have the links in the actual email. And I, again, when I show you the example, I'm going to show you the email template that we use that will that will send that out there for you, that you can use to send that out. But an email blast to your contacts. Believe it or not, that's probably the fastest way to get activity on your landing page, to get activity on your web form. Because if you're sitting back waiting for people to discover you, you could have a long wait, especially if you're in a in a product like an auto insurance. I mean, come on, let's be honest. How many people actually go out and say, oh, my agent has a web form for auto insurance? You kind of have to trigger that. You got to push that. You got to know when, when that's coming up. So that's the importance of X dates. So I know that your auto insurance is coming up for renewal. I'm going to make this real simple for you. I'm going to blast you out an email saying, look, here's a link you can use to just get a quick quote, and I'll go ahead and take care of that for you. It's not the only way, but it is one of the ways. YouTube videos, which I showed you the links and descriptions there. Postal mail. If you guys are already mailing stuff, I'm talking postal mail. If you're already mailing stuff, make it easy for people to get to your web page or to your landing page by putting the URL, not just the URL to your website, but let them know what they can do. So if you're, you already have a postcard out there and it says you want to get a quote, want to do this, you know, need answers, here's the URL. Text message info. And guys, text messaging is big and it's going to get even bigger. So if you don't have text messaging in your agency or you're not utilizing text message effectively in your agency, you're already behind. Okay, I'm just telling you right now, you're already behind. So one of the things that we try to do is we try to make sure that people can text message and we'll put that on a postcard. You want information, you want to quote, text message your email address and we'll send you information or text message our number and one of our people will call you and, and give you a quick quote. So make sure that you're using that. Recorded message information. Same thing, and I'll show you that in the Data Supercenter, how we use recorded messages. We'll put them out on that postal mail and say, if you want to hear a short two-minute version of this or you want to hear a quick three-minute version of this, here's how you can do that. In fact, let me go back over here and show you this piece. Let me scroll back up to this right here. There we go. So this is an actual landing page that we use. And if you notice, I've got an arrow pointing to it. It says, not ready to talk to an insurance agent. Listen to a two-minute recorded message on three insurance coverage weaknesses we see on a daily basis. And then there's the number, 682-200-1808. That is a real number, by the way. If you call that, that's going to get you to the Inspire Nation prompts. But we put this out on our landing pages. And, of course, I'm, if I'm blasting this out in an email, I'm going to put a link right there. And that's going to get people to, to fill this out. The ones that are interested are going to fill it out. Your business card. If you've got a landing page, you have a URL, that should be on your business card. Maybe not on the front. Maybe it's on the back of your business card. But you definitely should have it out there. Remember, a landing page has, is pretty much one call to action. If they go to your website, they could get lost and confused. That, that happens because there's so much information, and people swear up and down they have so little time. So if they have so little time and there's a bunch of information on your website, they don't know what to do. 
So sometimes you need to drive them just to the place where you want them to go. That means on your business card, you can show your landing page. You need to get a quote right now, go here. Or you need, you have, an, you have a question about homeowner's insurance, go here. And just put that one URL or the text message number that drives them there. Social networking connections. This is a message to connections. Again, that can be just an in message if you're using LinkedIn or maybe just a one-on-one -on -one message if you're using Facebook. It can be a response to a group discussion or question. How many times have you guys gone out and you, you've watched a YouTube video or you've read a blog and someone will go out there and say, well, you know what? I've got some information on that as well. Here's the link to it if you would like to find out this information. Now, of course, you always get the want to make money from home and, you know, I, you can make $20,000 a day. I mean, yeah, you kind of overlook that crap, but guess what? It does work or it wouldn't be there. So there are a lot of times you can go out on a group discussion and like a LinkedIn or Facebook group or Google Plus community and people are asking questions and you have an expertise in that area as well as a landing page where they can request more information or they can request a quote or they can do something like that. Don't be afraid to put your information out there. Hey, I specialize in homeowners insurance. I know what's going on with the roofs when we're talking about homeowners insurance. You want more information? Here's a link where you can request information, or here's a link to my question and answer section of my web, and you can put that, or here's my text message number. Text message in, text message your email address, and get back a special report where I talk about homeowners and roof problems and things that are going on, however you're going to do that. E-newsletters or hard copy newsletters, if you're sending those out, make sure that you've got a link to your landing pages or web form. And then on special outreach contacts like birthdays, wedding anniversaries, or, or X dates or product expiration dates, don't be afraid to send something out, whether you're mailing it or emailing or texting or whatever. Don't be afraid to send something out with a page specific to your landing page. We're going to create a Facebook ad and show you some things that you can do with a Facebook ad. And I know for those of you that are on the last couple of sessions, you're like, well, didn't we do that before? Yeah, we did, but we got a bunch of new people. So we're gonna create an ad here in Facebook, and it's gonna give us some options, okay? Some, some very good options. Boost your page, promote your page. And for those of you that were on or were not on the one that we did on social networking, guys, like our Facebook is not going to get you any business. Just, okay, this is my opinion, but I've got a lot of evidence to back it up. Like our Facebook is not going to get you any business. That's just a bunch of people liking your Facebook. There's no commitment there. So we like to use where it says reach people near your business. And I'm going to set audience and budget. Here, you can set a radius within your business. So I'm going to go with a, let's go with a 20 mile radius right here within my, now that gives me 1.9 million people. I'm in insurance, so of course I'm going to use the 30 to 60 age group because those are the ones who tend to buy insurance, 30 to 60. My budget, I'm going to set a lifetime budget, which means for this campaign, how much do I want to spend? I'm going to spend 50 bucks. That's all I'm going to spend. I'm going to choose my ad creative here under my ad creative. Then you put your text. Your text should drive people, should give them the desire to want to come to your, your landing page or website. Maybe you say, you know, you have questions on your homeowners and, and I like homeowners. I like property because that's not so saturated that people feel like they know it all. You know, auto insurance, people really do feel like they know it all, even though they don't. We know that if you don't have the right medical coverage or the right PIP coverage or the right uninsured motorist coverage, that you're going to get screwed in an accident. We know that as, as professionals, but they're only looking at price. But I like homeowners. So maybe your text says something like, have a question about your homeowner's insurance or your roof damage in case of a storm, fill out our form or give us a call. And then you have a call to action down here. And under the call to action, you can you can say call now, learn more, send a message, learn more. When you click the learn more, it will ask you to put a URL link there. So let's click there and it says, what's the URL? You can put the URL to your landing page. If you've got a report, if you've got anything like that, you can put that right there. Now, when the person sees this ad, they will and they want more information and they want to learn more, they click there and they go to your landing page. Same thing with your call now. 
if you are using something like a like a data supercenter where we have a built-in marketing number, you can put a number there that they can call. So for those of you that say, well, Billy, I don't want a landing page. I want them to actually call me. Put your number there. Maybe they'll call your office. Okay. But if not, if you are wanting to use a landing page or a URL, you've also got that. And these are local people. Now you've got a bunch of different Facebook ads that you can set up, but I'm, I just wanted to show you this one so that at least we had something to work with today. Okay. Something to work with. Okay, this is inside of LinkedIn. You know, one of the things that I asked you guys to do was to do an email blast. But a lot of you don't realize that inside of your LinkedIn, you can download all of your contacts. I just did this, in fact. Any of you that are connected with me on LinkedIn, you know you got an email from me that just reminded you of my expertise and what we do and the products that we provide for you. So inside of LinkedIn, you can go under profile, or excuse me, go under my network, you go to connections. Under connections, you're going to see a little icon over here on the side, a little gearbox. So you click there. Once you click there, it'll say export LinkedIn connections. It's going to send it's going to send you to a spreadsheet that gives you first name, last name, email address, the company that they're with and their job titles. But about once a year, maybe twice a year, I'll download all of my LinkedIn connections and I'll just blast them out a link that shows what I do, um, what my expertise is, how I feel like we benefit folks and ask them if you've got any questions or if you want to connect with me or you want to not connect. But if you want to schedule an appointment with me or you want to know more about what we do, then please click on one of these links and it'll take them to a landing. I'm going to go into the data and marketing super. I had it built just for marketing. That's what it's for, to, to get all those processes that we've asked you guys to do, the new customer process and claims process and, you know, the follow-up and the policy review and all that stuff. I couldn't get, couldn't get staff to do the different things that I needed them to do, so we built a system that automates that entire process. The first thing that I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the landing pages. So let's come out here, and I'll just grab one of these landing pages. Let's, let's show you the emergency contact form. So let's click here. And that's the actual emergency contact form that you can create inside the, the landing page there, or create inside the center. Now I'm going to go back and show you how to actually create the, the form from scratch. We're just going to do a brand new one from scratch. We're going to add a landing page. And on this one, I'm going to say landing page training. Click Save. It automatically starts out with first name, last name, and email address. So I'm going to click on form here and show you that there are other things that you can add. So maybe I want a phone number as well. So I'm going to click required. I want the phone number to be required. Maybe I want to know what day they want. So here I'm going to say that this is a drop down list. And I'm going to put best contact date or day, excuse me, not day, day. So put Monday, and I'm doing this live, guys, because I want you to see how easy it is to do this. Tuesday, Wednesday, that's how, that's how I grew up spelling Wednesday. Uh, probably a lot of you did, right? Thursday and Friday. So it's it safe. Now I've got a drop down, best contact day. Maybe I want best contact time uh, best contact time and so I'll put morning midday afternoon and evening now I'll hit save Apply my changes. Let's come back over and preview the form. So now look, I've got a form that says first name, last name, email, phone, best contact, best contact time. The nice thing about this is this automatically flows back into the data super center. So when this person fills this out, they automatically get a record created inside of the data super center. Now I can put a header out here. Maybe I wanted to make this, I wanted to add a picture or something like that. So I'm going to say insert image. I like this image right here. So let's go apply changes. 
Now there's the image, it's in the header. Let's go to the preview. So there's the landing page. There's the image that's inside of it. If I wanted to change the style, maybe it's just too bland for me and I wanted to do something else with it, let's add a color. No, no, no. That's too much, too much detail with that. Let's go here. I'll just pick this. We click OK. Now let's look at the preview. All right, so now I got a landing page and it's looking pretty good so far, right? But the power, the real power is in the actions. So I'm going to go under the actions tab. And under the actions tab, this is all stuff that completes inside of the data supercenter. Assign this source. If there was a note that I wanted to add to every single record of anyone who filled out this form, it would add that way. If there were any type of flags that I wanted to put out there. So let's say this was a a LinkedIn contact, and I only had sent this to LinkedIn people. So anyone who filled out this form, I knew that they were a LinkedIn person. I could put a flag out there. I could have it where, of course, it sends me an email when someone fills is out fills out the form. But maybe there's an autoresponder series. Maybe they wanted a request, and I want every six months, I want them to get an email from me that says, you requested information. I haven't had a chance to contact you, whatever I wanted to say. So I could assign an autoresponder to this one. New customer workflow as an example. I could assign a to-do plan. A to-do plan is a series of tasks, not just emails. A to-do plan could be a mailing. A to-do plan could be a phone call that I need to remind myself of. So it's basically you take whatever the actions are that you want your staff or you want yourself to accomplish whenever there's a prospect or quote or something like that and you just put them in a to-do plan so I could assign that to-do plan right away I can also cancel other autoresponders maybe this person was a was a quote a year ago and I send them something and now they filled out the form again well I don't want them still getting emails from a year ago and the new ones that they signed out for so I'm gonna cancel any other assigned autoresponders or any other assigned to do so now they're only fresh they're only getting the the thing that they requested today and the nice thing about the data super center is I can record an audio thank you message so it says thank you we received your information but over here I can all I can go out and I can record pre-recorded audio and the moment a person clicks on the form and hits submit now if they've got their speakers on they'll hear me saying hey thank you so much for for uh, filling this out. I really appreciate it. We're going to contact you shortly. If you have any questions between now and then, you can call us back at this number. So again, it gives them that, it gives them the video, I mean, excuse me, it gives them the audio, but it also gives them the, the thank you, the autoresponder. I could send them to another web page once they fill this out. Maybe I'm, maybe it's, uh, okay, you fill this out for auto, but we've also got other stuff I want you to know about. And so you send them to another web page or you can send them to another landing page the URL but how do I get that URL and where do I post it so now we'll come back over here on the landing page training it says get link get shortened URL get a QR code or get HTML code so it really depends on where I want to post it if I'm trying to post it on my social networking some of them depending on who you're using will allow you to post the HTML code which means the form itself just shows up you just you see the complete form some of them won't allow you to do that and you have to get a link that can be a long link or that can be a shortened link so let's say I grab the shortened link right here copy come back over here I'm gonna paste this in Google so that you'll see what they see now I hit enter and there's the landing page and there's the link okay and excuse me there's the landing page and there's the form that's already a part of it and again it's you can be as creative as you want or you can be as bland as you want. It's completely up to you. So here's another one. Let's let's pull up this landing page right here. This is for Pam's Bakery. So let me pull this. Pam's Bakery. Now, of course, I haven't gone and done anything. Lorem ipsum is not really a is not really a word. But I just want to show you. We've got different templates that are out here for you. You create that. Your key is to just grab this the URL. That's the whole key, is to grab the URL and do something with the URL and drive people back to that. So with that being said, let me come back over here and let me show you guys some additional things that you want to know about your, um, your URL. So I just did a little demonstration. Here's some additional tips. 
and, and this is important. So if you guys are taking notes, please make sure that you are writing these down. Long URLs convert as well as short URLs if the name of the call to action is in the link. So I'm going to get a link in URL. So let's go over where it says insurance conversation. Get link. Notice there's this really long link over here. Well, the problem is a lot of people will not click on short links. They won't click on a Google link or a Bitly link or one of those other links because they, they're afraid that it's going to download a virus or they're afraid it's not going to not going to be real. So that means you have to take this link sometimes and you have to play with it a little bit. You got to maneuver it. So I'm going to copy this link. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to open up a Word document. Okay, I'm going to open a Word document and I'm going to hyperlink this. This is, I'm pasting it into a Word document. That's all I'm doing. And I'm hyperlinking. paste so there's that long 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 link right but I don't want it to say that I want it to say something else maybe I wanted to say uh, request a report yeah so I'll go request a report and I click OK now I just took that and turned that into a just wording okay it's still the same link now I can copy this and either paste it to my website or paste it to some other form if that if that particular if that particular site allows me to do that some sites you don't even have to do all this some sites you can just put it on there and it'll allow you to put whatever wording you want on top of it it's completely up to you however you want to do that but just remember long URLs convert as well as short URLs so don't be afraid of that long URL as long as it says what it's doing so if I'm if I'm going out and I'm going to Pam's bakery as an example and her URL says you know HTTP dot 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 all that other stuff Pam's bakery recipe download dot HTML I'm not afraid of that link because I know that that's that link is actually to where it, it's going to where I want it to go but if it just says some random numbers and letters, I might be a little afraid of that. And in that case, I might need you to put a shortened link out there or maybe my server will block it. So you've got different ways. You've got to play with this a little bit. Always have an autoresponder email automatically sent to the contact. Don't have people fill out a form and then they don't get anything for their work. Always have some type of automated response email, whether it's thank you so much, you'll hear from us shortly, or here's, here's a free report or something. Have something. Don't ever just have people fill out information. Always follow up immediately with the phone call and leave a phone message. See, guys, here's the thing I think a lot of people get confused about with this whole do not call, especially captive agents. Captive agents feel like, oh, God, I can't call anybody. As long as the person voluntarily, voluntarily provided their contact information, you've got 90 days to follow up with them or until they tell you don't contact me. So if they went out and filled out your web form, if they filled out your landing page, if they saw your social networking blog post and you know they decided to click on that link and they provided information, you've got 90 days to follow up, which means you can leave a voicemail message. Okay, you can leave a voicemail message because they were the ones who initiated the contact. All right. Hyperlink your landing page to a picture, if possible, with full link below. The picture, in, in uh, case the server blocks the picture. The submit button should remind the contact what they are requesting. Don't just click submit here, submit now. Notice on this one that I'm showing you, it says start a conversation, because that's what I'm talking about. I can make your insurance search easy and relaxing. Let's have a conversation. And then it says start a conversation. On all of the landing pages, the ones that actually work the best it's not just click here submit now it's okay that's not always the best it's best to remind the customer download your report so if they're trying to get a report the button should say download your report if they are trying to answer a question then the button should say uh, answer your question remind the customer what they're clicking on and you'll have a better conversion rate Here's some other suggestions. Host an educational conference call at least once a month. Market it to your business referral partners as well as customers and prospects. How do you do that? Use freeconferencecall.com. Why am I telling you that? Because again, the only people that show up to conference calls are the people that are interested in the topic or the subject or they wouldn't show up. They wouldn't even register for it. So you can use freeconferencecall.com 
put out something on auto insurance, homeowners insurance, motorcycle insurance, life insurance, benefits, whatever it is that you do, Medicare, whatever it is that you do. But even if you only get two people to show up, those are two people that are interested in the topic or they wouldn't be there. I already explained the completion of a landing page should start or stop other automated campaigns. Make sure your landing page is mobile optimized. 85% of all searches now happen on a mobile device. They don't happen at a desktop. Okay, the only people on desktops are kids that are at home because their parents want to make sure that they're not doing something they're they're not supposed to do on a desktop. But most mobile most searches now, whether you're Google or whatever, happen on a mobile device. So you have to make sure that your landing pages are mobile optimized. If you're using the data supercenter, that's already built in, so you don't have to worry about that. Other forms, you got to make sure that they are mobile optimized, or you at least pick the templates that are mobile optimized to use when you're creating the form. And finally, shorter forms get more leads, get more people to fill them out, but longer completed forms generally are a higher quality lead. Okay, so shorter forms. So if you just put your name, your email address, and your zip code, then yeah, I can get a lot more people to fill that out because there's no real work. Are they going to be as good as the person who took five minutes and put in their name, their phone number, their address, their car, their VIN number? Their... No, I'm not. And see, and this is why you guys are getting so frustrated with Internet leads, because the Internet lead providers are using these short forms. Okay, They're using short forms. They're asking four or five questions, and now the person's filling out four or five questions, and you're paying 15 bucks for that. So if you're going to put out your own landing page, your own web form, Go ahead and split it up to where you're, you're having a lot of questions, okay? Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of it because I'd much rather have a higher quality lead that took the time to fill it out than to say, well, I got 20 people, but none of them are interested. Guys, this was your landing page. This was your web form. The only people that should have filled it out were the people that were interested in talking to you. So if you didn't put enough work into it to make them serious, you only have yourself to blame. Now, that doesn't mean put out a 50-page you know, land, landing page, but don't be afraid of eight or nine or ten questions. That's a good good question count, eight, nine, or ten questions. And don't be afraid to split it up into different pages. So I'm going to come back over here to my website, and I'm going to go to the home page. You know, we've, we've got a, a lot of different programs out here, and one of those programs is a free marketing plan. So the we say 2015. I need to change that. It's the PNC Agency Marketing Plan Tool. If you notice, there are one, two, three, four, five questions on the front page. But once you fill out those five, another five questions happen. And once you fill out those five, another five questions. Because I think it's like 25 questions total. But if I had put 25 questions, it would have scared a lot of people off. So you can set up your web forms, depending on the tool that you're using, you can set up your web forms to ask four or five questions at a time, then go to a different page so that the person doesn't feel overwhelmed by looking at 30 different questions.